Ava, I thought we were making a dessert video today. We are making a dessert video, Arpen. But it looks like we're making a pasta video. We are making a pasta video. Today we are making sweet pasta! In Italy we have a long tradition, as you know, of cooking pasta. But we don't cook pasta just in a savory way. We cook pasta also in a sweet way. And this time uh, we are uh, going to use a recipe that is an old recipe and it comes from uh, this book. This book was written by Pellegrin Artusi and this is considered the first book of the Italian uh, food, Italian cooking. I'm starting with making a uh, a sweet pesto and for this sweet pesto I'm going to use walnuts, powdered sugar and bread crumb. In the recipe Pellegrin Artusi specifies that we need to use spezie fini. Now spezie fini in English means uh, thinner spices. Thinner? powder spices. Oh. And because in that period in Italy the spezie fini used were most uh, cinnamon, nutmeg and cloves, I'm going to use uh, cinnamon, nutmeg and cloves. When the pasta is al dente, we are going to transfer it from the pot to a bowl. Pepper? Si, Pellegrino Antosi requires pepper. I'm going to add a little bit of our pesto into the pasta, mix it and the others I will use as a topping, as cheese. This is new for me. You've made some dessert pasta dishes, but they were all like, it's a little bit of a stretch to call any of the ones I've had an actual pasta dish. Maybe it uses pasta or it fries pasta dough or something like that. This is a plate of pasta. This is a plate of pasta. And actually Pellegrino Artusi writes in his book that uh, when people heard about this pasta, they are, oh my God, but then everyone loves it. <laughs> really? He says yes, that? Yeah. It smells amazing, just the spices alone. But it's very weird to have this smell coming from a plate of pasta. Buon appetito! Because he was right. That's the problem. But Artusi was right. That's extraordinary. I know, it's too good. It's sweet enough that it could be a dessert, but actually it's also kind of savory enough with the olive oil and the pepper that like, I could eat that for lunch. <laughs> okay, this specific is eaten as a first course because Pellegrino Artusi call it minestra. It is? This was not meant to be a dessert? No. Wow. He calls it minestra. So it, is, uh, it was meant to be a first course. Which I suppose implies that there are other sweet pastas that are even more dessert-like? We have uh, some other pasta dishes that okay, they can be eaten or as first course or as a dessert. Well, I definitely want you to show me one. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. So I've been using BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. I've talked about them in past videos. I'm still meeting with my therapist on a weekly basis. And I have to say that having an objective outsider who can give some perspective on what's going on in my own life is super helpful. We all have problems and challenges we go through in life and just having someone you can talk to about it, it really helps you process them and find ways to solve problems and overall just put things into perspective and help you move forward. 
If this sounds like something that would be useful in your life, then visit our link down in the description below. That's betterhelp.com slash pasta grammar. You'll answer a few questions and BetterHelp will use the results to pair you with a professional who has years of experiences helping people with challenges and experiences similar to yours. You'll be matched with a therapist within 48 hours usually, so you can get started fast. Over 4 million people have used BetterHelp to live a happier, healthier life. Why not you too? Once again, visit betterhelp.com slash pasta grammar or visit the link down in the description below and enjoy a special discount on your first month. A big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. The second recipe comes from Sicily and is similar to the first one because it uses nuts. This time we are going to use almonds and bread crumb. Honey, and this is what uh, is going to make our pasta sweet. Honey glazed pasta. Yep. Coming to an olive garden near you. Sorry? They don't know an olive garden how this is. Every sweet pasta in Italy has a cinnamon, so we need some cinnamon. Finish with some orange zest. I take back what I said about the other one because the smell of this one is really amazing. It's really orangey because there is the orange, and these are the things that you smell the most. Honey glazed spaghetti. Now I've seen it all. No, I've not no. seen it all. <laughs> I've not seen it no, all. <laughs> no, no. This kind of pasta can be eaten warm, hot, or also cold. Wouldn't the honey like harden? And it become more like a dessert, more like a cake. Interesting. Does it have a name? In Sicily, they call this, in the village where this is from, they call this pasta cumeli, which means pasta, pasta with, with honey. honey. <laughs> you guys uh, are so creative with your food, but uh, then when it comes to names, sometimes it's no, just... No, because we are tired when it comes to name. It's like all our creativity is to create something special, but then with the name, it's like, okay, call it like that. <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, already that's starting to thicken, although it's not as hard as I would have expected. No, because by the way, we use a little bit of pasta water. Yeah, so the honey is thinned a bit, yeah. Buon appetito! Oh, don't listen to what she said. Even hot, this absolutely works as a dessert. See, it's like, it's sweet, there is this the honey, is it's sweet. sweet. Wow. The orange, the honey, the cinnamon, the crunchy toasted almonds. I was expecting a plate of sweet pasta to be a little weirder, but it, it actually makes sense when you think about it. It's just flour and water. Lots of desserts are made with flour and water. You can put the jam or Nutella or whatever you want on a slice of bread. It's flour and water. The tradition of sweet pasta in Italy, it's a very long tradition. Like during the Renaissance, during the medieval age, there wasn't a separation between savory and sweet. They put it sugar in everything. Always together. When we started eating this plate, I was like, I'm going to make sure to leave like at least half of it to go cold so I can try that. I'd I don't know if I'm gonna 
get to that point. Might have oh, to make this again some, sometime. <laughs> with the moment. Have to get back to you on the results of that experiment. Is there a reason that all of these have used spaghetti? Like is, is spaghetti the only pasta that you sweeten? No, Arpir. Because uh, we have uh, dishes with uh, tagliatelle, with lasagna, and we have dishes also with uh, sweet gnocchi. Gnocchi. The first step for this dish is to make the condiment, the cheese, and also a little bit of stuffing, which will be the same. So I melt a little bit of butter. I had some brown sugar, but actually you can use also normal sugar. And I'm going to add some breadcrumb. And the ingredients that uh, we can skip because it makes everything better. <laughs> Some cinnamon. Our gnocchi this time are stuffed gnocchi, and we are going to stuff with uh, prunes. Prunes? Prunes. Yes. <laughs> prunes. Prunes sec. You can use also dried apricots. Make sure to remove the pits from the prunes because otherwise uh, you will be in trouble. To make our gnocchi dough what we need? Boiled potatoes and some zero zero flour. This is the normal way in which usually I make gnocchi but in this case uh, I'm going to use also an egg. Now what I need to do is put some breadcrumb inside the plums, pr prunes, and then take a disc, open a little bit, place the prune here, and then you close it. When the gnocchi start to float, they are done. But in this case, we need to cook uh, for two minutes more from the moment in which they start to float. Smells keep getting better and better in here. See? Does it smell amazing? <laughs> it's like. A... Also, just on a somewhat unrelated note, um, I tried some of just the breadcrumbs that Ava fried in the butter just by itself. Kind of amazing. It almost became like granola, it became very, very hard and crunchy. crunchy. Kind of like glazed almost. And, uh, just pointing out that it would be an amazing like cereal or something. But here Harper we have what uh, in Italy we call gnocchi di susine, which means plum gnocchi. These are direct from Friuli Venezia Giulia, which means that uh, in this episode we cover all of Italy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We cover all of Italy. Okay, I really want to see what they look like on the inside. They look like uh, stuffed gnocchi. Buon appetito! Buon appetito! 
you understand that something is extremely delicious when I feel here the flavor. Like the parmigiano, when it's a very good parmigiano, you feel it here. See, I feel it here. Ah, I like... know what you mean, yes. Well, these have an amazing tart taste. Mm, mommy. <laughs> so good. Probably the least sweet out of all the pasta dishes today, and yet it it still works brilliantly as a dessert it's like... because it has that kind of sour, fruity taste to it. This one's a this is a masterpiece. Do it, do it uh, for uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner. It doesn't matter as a dessert, as a first course, but do it. I'm gonna split this one. <laughs> yes, sure. I'm not going to give you it completely. <laughs> After they're done, I'm at six, so stop. We don't have any more anyone else. Mm -hmm, no, more. but we have more potatoes, and we have more prunes, and we have more eggs. More bread We have more breadcrumbs. <laughs> more cinnamon. So, I'm not too worried. We hope you enjoyed this look at some of the sweet pastas of Italy. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian who, na who made another um, sweet dish that most people wouldn't expect to be sweet. It was the fried... Uh, Cauliflower fritters, what do you call them? Fritelle? Sfince di cavolfiore. Really Sfince good. di cavolfiore. I'll put a link to the video somewhere up here. If you want to become a pasta grammarian, just hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar. And if you try any of these sweet pastas, tag us in a picture there. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao.